what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it. Here's a great quote from Brian Kelly, uh, excuse me, from Bo Davis uh, that we will use to kick off the conversation here about the LSU pass rush, uh, the the key, arguably, to this entire defense getting better. But Gio Paez talked about this when he met with the media. Um, here's the quote. Quote. It's not a sin. It's not a sin to get blocked. It's a sin to stay blocked. Um, where was this last year? Mason Smith needed to hear this in the way that Gollum needed the ring. Like, my man would have benefited from this massively. It's not a sin to get blocked. It's a sin to stay blocked. Savian Jones uh, was asked about the pass rush and the coaching of Bo Davis and Kevin Peoples and how much different it's been, and here's what he had to say. We've been taught pass rush, but it had never really been broken down to us. Now that we have Bo Davis and Kevin Peoples to help us with the pass rush side, I feel like our knowledge of football, period, is definitely better. So already you, you can see these guys were kind of out there flailing in the wilderness only being taught. I mean, look, here, here's here's another quote. Um, they're working on more moves. It's not just a bull rush or push pill. It's not just the basic stuff anymore. They're now doing more technique stuff that we've now had to work on, not, like not lunging. Now we have to counter stuff. That was a quote from Emory Jones. So, like, the, my, my reaction to this is twofold. First off, the how elementary what was being taught is boggles the mind. Hmm. If we're talking about bull rush and push pull being the extent of it. Um, Emory Jones was talking about Saban Jones, for example, how much harder he is now, and he's got this new club move that's kind of his go-to move, whatever. Uh, but secondly, there may be no area on the field that this team could take a bigger jump than in the pass rush uh, because of the technique of Bo Davis, but especially Kevin Peoples. Remember, Kevin Peoples was a semifinalist for the Broyles Award last year. He is viewed as one of the fast risers in this game. And here's what Brian Kelly had to say about Kevin Peoples uh, and the impact that he's having. He's outstanding at what he does. He's a great technician, great teacher. You know, he has those guys the whole day. As you know, we brought in two defensive line coaches uh, for that purpose. To be a really good defense in this league, you got to get to the quarterback. And so, you know, I felt it was important that that we brought in somebody that was really good at, you know, teaching pass rush and being specific at that. And Kevin's the best in the business, and it's starting to show itself in the teachings on a day-to-day basis with our ends, and and, uh, it's starting to show itself. To be a really good defense in this league, you got to get to the quarterback. We talk about all the time, why do defensive end gets paid? Why do wide receivers get paid? Why do offensive tackles get paid? Because these are all positions that most directly affect the queen, the most important position on the field, the quarterback. LSU last year, seventh in the SEC with 31 sacks. If they're going to be that top 40 defense, the quickest way to getting there is by creating havoc, being disruptive, and getting after that QB. So who's that going to come from is going to be the question. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be that player outside of what we think maybe Harold Perkins can do? We've seen Harold Perkins line up on the edge. We've seen him do different stuff, and he can get after the quarterback. Who can LSU count on, in your opinion, to go get that done? Like we mentioned, Savion Jones. A lot That's of Savion Jones hype right now, right? But you know, looking at his body type and looking at who he is, sure, he can get after the quarterback. But they're also counting in on the run game and setting the edge and different things. And so, Braden Swinson can, was fantastic. I was going to say, year. can Swinson be the guy that is your go-to pass rusher? That's a defensive lineman and not Harold Perkins. Like, can he take that job over playing the jack position or? Is it going to be Womack as a true sophomore coming over and kind of living up to what we think he can be? Like, who do you have right now leading this team in sacks and you can't choose Harold Perkins? Uh, I, huh. I haven't thought a lot about leading the team in sacks because it just looks like such a uh, such a rush-by-committee sort of group in that maybe the most pure pass rushing physical potential out of that defensive line would be Deshaun Womack. But it's like, I, I don't 
you know, am I going to project for him to lead in sacks when he's a true sophomore? And last year was like a couple flashes. I I, I don't know if I'm there. Um, but what I do see is I've heard a lot of, like we said, we have positive anecdotal evidence on Savion Jones. Yeah. We know Braden Swinson was good last year. And if he was good being taught what he was being taught, how good can he be being taught what he was being taught now? Right? Uh, I, I know that I think back to Damone Clark and him from that inside linebacker position, the sack numbers he put up. And 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 so then if all of a sudden you combine that with Harold Perkins' skill set and the, the yeah. quote with Baker, where he's like, look, Perkins is going to be transcendent. Like, okay, well, I think that he's going to play a massive role. I think uh, – I, I still can't. I, I'm so confused on the Wits, the Weeks brothers. I can't remember which is which. Wit um, is 40. Wit is 40. West is Not West. Okay, well, Wit's 40. Okay, I think Wit Weeks probably plays a role in there as well. Um, well, I was going to – I asked you that question, T, because when you look at what they were a year ago, Perk did lead the team with five and a half sacks. Yeah. And then next was Makai Wingo at four and a half from the interior, a defensive tackle. Mm. Third on the team was Greg Penn at inside linebacker. So two of your three – Top sack getters were inside linebackers. Now we know Perk lined up on the edge some, but it wasn't a ton. Yeah, Mason Smith was number four at defensive tackle, right? So, so you had nothing from the ends then. I mean, you got pressures from Swinson, uh, but I'm surprised Jordan you didn't get Jefferson was tied with Mason Smith at defensive tackle. Savion Jones was tied with that same group, and so Savion Jones two and a half. Braden Swinson, uh, he had two. Paris Shan had two. Deshaun Womack had a sack and a half. So you got to go a long way down this list to find an edge rusher. It was defensive tackles, and it was middle linebackers that kind of led your team. Yeah. Um, so, the, again, I think that tells us that with Kevin Peoples now and the upgrade therein, that you should expect a lot more from uh, from your edge defenders. I mean, you just heard Brian Kelly there. And actually, uh, I, I think somebody might have chopped off just the very front of that quote where he was asked about, like, where this uh, improvement has come from in the pass rush during camp, and he just said, like, it's Kevin Peoples. And, and then he went into the spiel that you heard. But the way in which he said, just like, oh, it's it's Kevin Peoples, was very, uh, uh, I would say, very complimentary of the hire that they made over the offseason. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again... Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.